right, so let's take a quick second to talk about our opening size. Now we're going to be working with two 36 inch door panels today that are 79 inches tall. Typically you're going to want your height to be about an inch and a half taller than your door. So for a 79 inch door, we're going to want it to be about 80 and a half, 80 and three quarters, somewhere in that neighborhood. Width wise, our doors are actually 35 and a half each. So together we can make the opening 72 and that'll leave enough of a gap. You can go 72 and a half, maybe something like that. You don't want your gaps to be too big. That's why we're here today. In this house, they actually made this opening way too big. We've got gaps at the top. We've got huge gaps on the side. Our pins are all, our adjustments are all stretched out to, you know, to the point where they're bending and they're just, I don't know who did that. It's too big. So we're going to fix that by adding some wood to shrink down this opening. All right, it's going to look real nice. We're going to put door casing around everything and it's going to make the opening the proper size and it's going to fix the problem at the same time. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and measure for our wood right here. Now we have about four and seven eighths right here and I've already measured all the way around and it's pretty consistently four and seven eighths. You'll want to use a one by six for this. I went ahead and used primed one by six. It was a couple of dollars more, but it did not have all the knots that the regular unprimed version of the one by six had. It just, those looked terrible. So I just went ahead with the primed one and these look good. So let's get these out on the table saw. All right, got everything cut. Now, depending on the size of your opening, like if you're working with just raw framing right here with drywall, your opening may be big enough where you need to add shims at the top and on the sides. If you have enough room, you can put the whole frame together, you know, this part here, and put it together and put it up as one piece and just use shims to kind of brace everything up and then nail it. But in my case, since I'm working with drywall and I'm just trying to shrink the hole a little bit, we want it to be 72 by 80 and three quarters. I can put everything tight to the drywall on all three sides and get to that. Okay, so let's go ahead and nail everything up. All right, so let's go ahead and measure the length for the sides. And we're right at 80 and three quarters. All right, so for our door casing, I like to measure back an eighth of an inch on each surface. We got left and we got the top, an eighth of an inch right there. That's for our reveal. So instead of trying to make a precise measurement, all you got to do is put the casing in place and then hold it where the marks are and then mark your cut. All right, and that's going to go that way, right? All right, so I've already got the other casing up and I got it nailed on. Now for this one, I like to leave the top, say two or three feet of it loose. That way, in case my top piece is not exactly right, I can adjust it and get it to fit good. So let me nail this on, leaving the top loose. All right, now for this top piece, I've already cut one side of it, and I'm going to hold it up there perfectly to the other cut and get a mark on there. All right, so I'm holding the other side on there. Let me just mark that. All right, so I'll probably come back later with my small nail gun and come into the corners with it, one down there as well. That'll hold them corners together a little bit better. Now, I didn't do the inside right now. I have the trim for that. I'll probably come back later on because I got to empty out half this closet to get to that. Let's just caulk this and paint it, and then I'll be ready to hang the doors. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Okay, so back to the video. All right, so we got everything caulked and painted. I think it looks pretty good. The next thing we need to do is draw a center line across the top here for our track, all right? Remember, these were four and seven eighths. That's what I ripped them at. So what we need to do is put a center line at two and seven sixteenths. You could go two and a half. I mean, that little sixteenth is not gonna matter. 
I like to draw several lines across there. That'll give us a good reference. All right. Two and seven sixteenths. And just do that all the way across. Now, in my case, I've got a one-piece track that's about six feet long for both doors. Normally, you'll have two tracks because you're going to buy two 36-inch doors, and they're going to come with their own 36-inch track. If that happens, it doesn't matter. You still use the same center line and put both tracks on that center line, and they'll wind up straight. But in my case, I've got the one-piece track. Now, you can use the shorter track if you've got several marks up there for a straight edge. You can use a four foot level. It doesn't really matter as long as you get a straight line up there. I'm gonna go ahead and use my one piece track because it's already the right length. Now what that line will do is when you hold this up there, you'll see that line through the screw holes. All right, let's go ahead and hang up our track. Lining up the mark with the screw hole right there, we can see we're centered. <laughs> well, we'll have to take it back down. I forgot to put the little sliders in there that holds the doors up. Oh, well. All right, so the next thing we need to do here is get our pivot pin brackets in. Now, I've already put this one in down here, but we're going to work on this one here in just a second. Now, we're working with straight walls here, so it's very easy. All we have to do is measure our 2 and 7 16 off of the back side of this down there and we'll have the same point for the center line that we do up here, no problem. But what if your wall continues on? There's no reference point to measure off of. All you need to do is take a level and center up the top of the level on your bracket up here on your track, and then you can get a level plumb line down there so that you know exactly where to put your pivot pin. Now, if there doesn't happen to be wood in exactly the right spot, just use some drywall anchors right there and that'll hold that bracket on there very securely. All right, so very simple. We'll measure our two and seven sixteenths to get us to the center. Got our mark established right there. Then you'll want to center this part right here where the pin actually goes. That's the part that you want centered on that line. All right, very good. Now we're working with a concrete floor right here, so I'm not going to bother with that screw. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. If you have wood or hardwood or anything like that, then yeah, you can go ahead and put that screw in there. So I wanted to mention real quick, you might have some problems with the trim if you're installing a set of doors where there wasn't a set of doors already before. If that happens, you'll just have to figure out what you need to do with the trim to make it all work. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Just wanted to mention it. So what we're looking at here is the top side of the right-hand door, and this is the top right of the right-hand door. Now on this one, we get the pivot. This is the pivot right here. On the other door, on the left-hand door, this one is going to go on the left side of the left-hand door. Okay, so it's, it's just a mirror image. Now you have to be real careful with these things. I have broken them by driving them in with a hammer like so. It will work but you have to be really careful not to break it. I made this tool, it's like a sleeve, and what that'll do is keep it from bottoming out on itself. See that? And the roller wheel goes on the other side at the top. Now same thing here, you can drive it in like this real careful. All I did was make this out of a sleeve and then I cut a hole into it so it'll fit over that. And last but not least, our bottom pivot. Now this one goes directly below the top pivot I showed you earlier. This one doesn't really require anything fancy. I've never broken one of these. All right, probably a good idea to turn this in somewhat. All right, so we're ready to hang our door. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is get that bottom pivot in the bracket in the bottom and kind of have the door folded in half and at an angle like this. And you'll also want to have a screwdriver handy also. Yeah. 
you'll want to bring your little sliding thing in and you'll want to line up this top pivot right with that as soon as you kind of bring the door up just like so just like that keep bringing it up now we can lock our screw and see where we're at now in case you've got your door too close to the wall you'll want to open it slowly to make sure you don't gouge up the wall if you Getting ready to, you got to stop. All right, so we're almost done here. We've just got a couple of minor adjustments to deal with. We've got a little bit of a slight height difference here at the top, and we have a gap here in the middle. The gap's not too bad, but I could close it just a little bit. You don't want to close it so that you have to force the doors closed, but just so they close smooth, so make the gap as small as possible. To do that, all we have to do is lift up on the bottom and move the bottom in or out, or undo those screws at the corners so we can adjust those in or out. I'm going to go ahead and take care of those adjustments so we have some nice looking doors. All right, that's looking pretty good right there. Nice and even. We're pretty much in the center of everything, so it's opening and closing real nice. Very little effort. That's the way you want it. Very little gap here in the middle. Just enough so that you can close it easily and that's all you need. So let's go ahead and get the knobs on and a couple of other little things and then we'll be done. Alright, so as you can see here I've already got a hole right here but it doesn't matter. It's just a matter of drilling a hole in the right place. What I like to do is center the doorknob underneath this area right here. Right here center that of course center this way and that's really all it is we'll just feed the screw through the back and tighten it right up now these things do have a habit of spinning so make sure you get it tight enough and that'll help with that all right so if your doors are not hanging straight these are actually hanging straight and they're not doing the scissor effect like this like this. What you can do is add these aligners that come with it on the inside and what happens is they go right here in the back like this. When that hits the other door it'll push them together so that they're straight again. I am actually going to add this on here. You can add one if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and add them both while I'm here. See they go just like that right there. I didn't add the second one yet if you do go ahead and add the second one, just make sure that when they align together, they're not clashing together and keeping the door from closing. So that's all there is to that. All right, so here's the final product. Looks pretty good, I think. A whole lot better than it did before, that's for sure. Now there is one other little thing that comes with it, some little spring looking thing with a piece of plastic in the middle. It goes up here in this area right here to spring, the, it, it's junk take it and throw it as far as you can send it. That's what I say. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.